How's everybody doing tonight? You guys ready to worship? We'd love to have you. So 10:45, we'll be here. So um, 
Make sure I don't forget anything. I think that's everything. Uh, let's remember that verse. I think it's up here. Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame by the blood of the, uh, of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. That is what this message is about tonight. This is a celebration. It's not a drama. It's, it's a ministry. It's an outreach. It's not a program. Lord, we thank you tonight for your goodness. We thank you once again, Jesus, for this time of worship together, this time of celebration together, this time of growing together, Lord. We praise you, we love you, and we exalt you, Lord. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. The Word was first. The Word present to God. God present to the Word. The Word was God in readiness from day one. Everything was created through Him. Nothing, not one thing, came into being without Him. What came into existence was life, and the life was light to live by. This light blazed out of the darkness. The darkness couldn't put it out. The Word became flesh and blood. We saw the glory with our own eyes the one-of-a-kind glory, like Father, like Son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. His name was Jesus Christ. You carry me, you carry me, you carry me through it all. I
My name is not important. No, since becoming a believer, I only seek to magnify His great name. I once starved for truth, and truth found me. Today you will hear the stories, the testimonies, that brought me to my knees before my Savior, before yours. With Him I can do all things. Hear these words today. Let them change you. There was a man named John who was sent by God to point the way to Jesus, the Messiah. John pointed him out and called, This is the one, the one I told you was coming. He told the people, I watched the Spirit, like a dove flying down out of the sky, making himself at home in him. There's no question about it. This is the Son of God. Jesus traveled throughout the region of Judea, ministering to the people and performing miracles. During the time he was in Jerusalem, those days of the Passover feast, many people noticed the signs he was displaying and seeing that they pointed straight to God and trusted their lives to him. While traveling back to Galilee, Jesus passed through Samaria. He came to Sukkar, a Samaritan village. Jesus, worn out by the trip, sat down at the well. A woman, a Samaritan, came to draw water, and Jesus asked her, Would you give me a drink of water? I didn't respond at first because I could not believe he was talking to me. When no one else answered, I looked at him and he nodded at me as if to say he was talking to me. I remember it so clearly. I asked him if he wanted a drink of water, and he said that he would give me living water. He said anyone who drinks this water would never thirst again. He knew things about me that could have only been known by a prophet. He knew about my past, and I was so ashamed. You see, I had been married five times before, and I was living with a man who I wasn't even married to. I had given up on marriage. But this man, Jesus Christ, saw through all of that and still offered me his living water. He offered me freedom and he offered me forgiveness. And in that moment, I knew he was exactly who he said he was. He was the Messiah. I was overcome by emotion and ran back to the city to tell my neighbors who was here. There were some, however, that did not like the message of salvation and forgiveness that Jesus Christ was sharing with the people. The religious officials, the Pharisees, were spreading doubt throughout the people and trying to cause Jesus to contradict the teachings of the law. During the Passover feast in Jerusalem, he taught in the temple. All who listened were amazed at the amount of knowledge he had. On the final day of the feast, Jesus took his stand. He cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Rivers of living water will brim and spill out of the depths of anyone who believes in me this way, just as the scripture says. Those in the crowd who heard these words were saying, This has to be the prophet. Others said, He is the Messiah, but still others disagreed. So there was a split in the crowd over him. Some went so far as to wanting to arrest him, but no one laid a hand on him. From Jerusalem, Jesus went across to the Mount of Olives, but he was soon back in the temple again. Swarms of people came to him. He sat down and taught them. The religion scholars and Pharisees led in a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. They stood her in plain sight of everyone and said, Teacher, this woman was caught red-handed in the act of adultery. Moses, in the law, gives orders to stone such persons. What do you say? They were trying to trap him into saying something incriminating so they could bring charges against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger in the dirt. They kept at him, badgering him. He straightened up and said, The sinless one among you, go first. Throw the stone. Bending down again, he wrote some more in the dirt. Hearing that, 
they walked away, one after another, beginning with the oldest. The woman was left alone. Jesus stood up and spoke to her, Woman, where are they? Does no one condemn you? No one, Master. Neither do I, said Jesus. Go on your way. From now on, don't sin. I stood there, not knowing whether to scream and run and jump with joy, or the power to speak and weep with gratitude. You see, I was so close to death that day. But to be completely honest, I knew the things that I had done in my life were unspeakable. I knew according to every law that I should be dead. My heart was so far from the guilt and shame that I thought it would be better for me. I hadn't felt emotion in years. But all that changed that day. In that moment, really. I knew the things that I had done were still wrong. I felt clean. Forgiven. Free. I asked him who he was, and he said that he was the Messiah. Jesus Christ. I followed his teachings, and I did my best to live up to them. His words to me were to go on my way, but to sin no more. I can tell you right there, in that instant, with that guilt and that shame, they were gone. In their place overwhelming peace and unimaginable.